Okay, in this video we're going to go through a calculated field in QuickBooks, the first ever calculated field that we can do inside of QuickBooks besides just, you know, quantity times amount. <laughs> uh, so what this is, it's the subtotal calculations. This feature is an enterprise only feature. It was released in the 15.0 edition of QuickBooks Enterprise and it was a mid-year release. So it was a big deal in my opinion, but they didn't really publicize it all that well because it was a mid-year release. It was released in May as opposed to when most new product releases come out in September. So why would we want to use this? So essentially what it does is it allows us to create calculations based on other fields in QuickBooks. So again, not just quantity times sales price, right? It allows us to take quantity times weight, volume, etc. So where I've seen clients use this is that one example is volume. So they sell little boxes of, let's say, Christmas ornaments, right? They come in a little box. And if a customer orders 50 of them, they want to know the total volume of size of those 50 because that allows the packing department or the shipping department to understand you know, what size boxes need to be used in order to get the entire order packaged up. The other time I've seen customers use it is they, I have a customer that uh, sells cabinets and the cabinets themselves take up a certain amount of space. So they manufacture the cabinets and they uh, deliver the cabinets out to people. And so every cabinet we wanted to be set up with a certain amount of cube space, they call it cube space, and so that we could understand, right, they have several different cabinets that go into the order and the cube total, so they'll have two of cabinet A, three of cabinet B, and one of cabinet C, just for size wise, the order total, the total cubes would define how, what size truck they need to use in order to deliver the product effectively. So they didn't want to stick a you know smaller order into a large truck or maybe they wanted to stick two orders into a large truck so totaling those cubes allowed them to be able to see how many cubes, how much cubic space each order would use, and it allowed them to better uh, decide which delivery truck should be used per order. And then of course, another reason I've seen customers use it is weight. So um, again, you know, we, we have, we sell, sell 10, let's go back to ornaments. So we sell 10 ornaments and each ornament weighs a pound. Um, and then we sell 20 of a different ornament and each one of those weighs one and a half pounds. And so they wanted to be able to have a total weight so that when they submitted their order to FedEx or UPS, they knew the total weight of the order. Um, so adding the weight column allowed, you know, let QuickBooks do that calculation for us. So there's some use cases. All right, so how do we use it? <laughs> so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go into our items list and we need to set up a custom part or a custom field for the items. So generally these are done on the, not, the inventory parts, but they don't have to. They can be done at the service part level as well. So you can see here I already have a cabinet set up. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. So you can edit any item and you're gonna click on custom fields. Okay, and then we're gonna click on define fields and we're gonna give it a weight a label. So I'm going to go ahead and call it weight. I'm going to use weight. Now you can force through, right? So you want it to be a number, any number of decimals or whole numbers only as an example. Uh, that makes it kind of easy. So usually I like to choose a, you know, one of these drop downs here so I can force it through and define, right? I don't want them putting any letters in this field because it's going to mess me up. Okay. You can also make it a required thing. So every time we add a new item to our items list, we want to require the base weight. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. So I have the weight in here. Um, so I can put in that field, right? So I'm putting in a quantity of five. So what the, or the weight is, the weight here is five per one individual unit, right? Because this is one cabinet and then we're going to use QuickBooks to do the calculation of what happens when they buy 10 cabinets. So again, a weight of five, okay, and then okay. 
Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this item and I'm going to say other cabinets. <laughs> other cabinets here. So everything else is the same. The custom field on this one though is going to be 12. Okay. All right. So now that I have the custom field set up and I've gone through and edited my items, right? Maybe check out that paste from Excel uh, video so you can know how to edit your items in mass so we can get this weight in there. Then I have to set up a subtotal item. Okay, because the subtotal is going to tell QuickBooks that we want this to be a calculated column. So I go down here and I select New. And again, this is Enterprise only that you're going to see these total columns to total down here. So I'm going to make this say Weight Subtotal so I know what I'm using. And then, you know, on the customer side, it just says Subtotals. Now down the side here, I decide what totals I want to columns or what what columns I want to total. So, of course, normally, right, with subtotal items in Pro and Premier, then it just totals the amount, right, and the quantity. So now I have a choice. I can choose to total the quantity. I can choose to total the price, right, the cost, because we can add cost fields now onto sales transactions. Um, but what I'm really focused on here is I want to total the weight and then you go over here to this little multiplier so multiplier quantity or times quantity I want to make sure that when I select that right that it has it's it's telling it I want to take the weight times a quantity okay and it gives you a little example you can say do not show this message all right so let's see what it looks like okay so now when I go onto my sales transaction, one thing that we have to add to the sales transaction, right, is I need to add in here uh, the weight column. Okay, so I go in, I say customize my template, I go to my columns here and add the weight column. If you don't have the weight column added on the template, then obviously it's not going to be able to calculate the weight for you, right? Um, it's also something that does not fix going backwards, right? So if you have all your invoices for all history and you're just now adding that weight column, it's not going to update all your transactions for all history. It's just going to work on the transactions going forward. Okay. All right. So on the invoice here, I'm going to add uh, two of the cabinets. Okay. Now notice it pulls the weight here. I'm going to say $150 each. That's pretty cheap for cabinets. And then I'm going to say 10 of other cabinets. And these are $300 each. Okay. Now notice that the weight right now is pulling the per unit weight. So what I want to do is once I have all the transactions on here, I want to go in and add the weight subtotal. So once I hit the tab button here, watch what happens. It goes through and it calculates. It takes my 5 times 2 it takes my 12 times 10 so it gets me right my weight per line item and then it also gives me a total of the weight so 130 whatever this is pounds maybe instead of just saying weight you may want to call it weight in pounds so that it's more effective right so on our template here it makes it so that's a you know describes a little better so now when we print this out we know that it's 130 pounds okay so it's a really neat feature um, you have to kind of play around with it make sure that you get it the way you know working the way that you want to uh, but definitely a really cool feature a couple things to make sure of of course this is totaling the weight subtotal uh, it's going to give us this total for this transaction. It's not going to add up four or five different transactions. But of course, you can add these uh, weights as columns. So, so now, since it's on the transaction here, I can add it as a column when I'm looking at sales reports or detail reports. Again, in those detail reports, they won't total at the bottom, but you can export it to Excel and total it, or uh, perhaps we can use one of the QuickBooks advanced reporting tools to uh, run some of those with the totals in there. But anyway, pretty neat that you can total it on a per transaction basis. I know that this now weighs 130 pounds, so when I go to FedEx to ship it out, 
I know the weight for what I'm shipping. Okay. So that is how to use subtotal calculations.